Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering fundamentals of nursing questions. Now, these are great questions and concepts you should expect to see on your Foundations of Nursing exam, HESI, ATI, even NCLEX. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started. First question. Using the principles of standard precautions, the nurse would wear gloves in what nursing interventions? A, providing a back massage, B, feeding a client, C, providing hair care, or D, providing oral hygiene. And I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. If you're new to my channel, just press the pause button and then you can press play whenever you're ready to resume. Okay guys, so the correct answer is D, providing oral hygiene. Why? If you're providing oral hygiene, there's a chance that you're gonna come into contact with their saliva, with the fluid in their oral cavity, their mucous membranes, okay? If it's wet, you're gonna put on gloves, all right? I don't care if it's saliva, if it's vomitus, if it's urine, if it's feces, if it's blood, if it's wet, you're putting on glass, all right? So A, B, and C, you don't expect to come into contact with any types of body fluids, so that's why D is the correct answer. All right, guys, let's move on to the next question. A nurse obtained a client's pulse and found the rate to be above normal. The nurse would document these findings as A, tachypnea, B, hyperpyrexia, C, arrhythmia, or D, tachycardia. Okay, guys, so um, let's see what the question was. What was it? Found, oh, pulse and heart rate. Okay, so the correct answer is going to be D, tachycardia, right? Be why? We know the heart rate is supposed to be 60 to 100. Anything more than 100 is going to be considered tachycardia. If it's less than 60, it's bradycardia. So let's look at our other choices. You have A, tachypnea. That's... Um, um, increased breathing above normal. Breathing supposed to be 12 to 22, 12 to 24, depending on the book you're using. Um, so anything above 22 or 24, depending on the book you're using, is going to be tachypnea. That's not the case here. B, hyperpyrexia. Uh, that's the fever when the temperature is too high. All right. Most books have the temperature, anything over um, 99.2 to 5, that's considered a fever. So um, hyperpyrexia is fever. All right, um, choice C, arrhythmia. Guys, that's any um, abnormal um, heartbeat. And that can be that heart beating too quickly or too slowly. And then, of course, we have our answer D, which is our tachycardia. But um, like I said, arrhythmia, guys, is just a regular heartbeat. All right, guys, um, next question. Which of the following actions should the nurse take to use a wide base support when assisting a client to get up in a chair? A, bend at the waist and place arms under the client. Let me go back. Bend at the waist and place arms under the client's arms and lift. B, face the client, bend the knees and place hands on the client's forearm and lift. C, spread his or her feet apart or D, Tighten his or her pelvic muscles. And I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. Oh, sorry, guys. I got a cold coming on something. Okay, guys. So the correct answer, B, you're going to face the client, bend at your knees, and place hands on client's forearm and lift. And that's going to be the proper body mechanics. C and D are absolutely wrong. We're going to throw that out the window. But let's look at A. Look what A says. It says bend at the waist. No, you bend at the waist, you're messing with your center of gravity, and not only can you fall, you might topple that patient over as well. So that's why A is wrong, B is the correct answer. Guys, please forgive me, I am speeding through this video. I've been seeing patients for the past 14 hours, and um, I got home, I wanted to get into bed, but I knew if I did not make this video for you tonight, you are not going to be getting your video this week. So I'm rushing because I want to take a shower and get into bed. All right. So forgive me. All right, guys. Next question. A client who's unconscious needs frequent mouth care. When performing a mouth care, the best position 
for the client is A, Fowler's position, B, side lying position, C, supine, or D, Trendelenburg. All right, guys, and the correct answer is sideline. And let me tell you why you want to put that patient sideline. Putting them sideline will help decrease the chance of aspiration. We don't want that patient to choke. We don't want them to aspirate, and that's why we put them in sideline position. Choices A, C, and D, and none of these help decrease the risk of aspiration like sideline position does, and that's why we're choosing a B. A client walks, um, a client, a walk-in client enters into the clinic with a chief complaint of abdominal pain and diarrhea. The nurse takes the client's vital signs hereafter. What phase of the nursing process is being implemented by the nurse? A, assessment, B, diagnosis, C, planning, or D, implementation? And the correct answer, guys, is A, assessment. It just says that the nurse takes the vital signs. It says that um, what phase of the nursing process is being implemented uh, here by the nurse? Assessment. You're gathering information. Anything that you do to gather information is an assessment. Whether it's taking vitals to get information about how that patient's doing physiologically, whether it's eyeballing that patient, whether it's going into the patient's chart and looking up information, whether it's asking the patient a question, anything that elicits information is considered an assessment. And so that's why A is the correct answer. Now, let's look at our other choices. After you've done your assessment, after you've done the vital signs, you have a clinical picture. That's when you can come up with B, your nursing diagnosis. What are you going to do to help your patient? Let me tell you what the nursing diagnosis is, by the way, guys. Nursing diagnosis is the patient's reaction towards the medical diagnosis. It's the patient's reaction towards the disease process. So the nursing diagnosis is always going to be something that you as a nurse can help the patient with independently without a doctor's order. All right? After you come up with your nursing diagnosis is your planning. You're going to plan what you're going to do for your patient. You're going to plan your intervention. ADPI, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention. You're going to intervene. You're going to do whatever you're, you came up with the plan, right? And last is evaluation. What are you evaluating? Your implementation. Whatever I did for that patient, did it work? And guess what? If it didn't work, you go right back to A assessment again. You reassess. Come up with another nursing diagnosis or it might be the same and you might have to alter it. Plan, intervention, evaluation. All right, so A is the correct answer for this question, assessment. Next question. It is best described as a systemic rational method of planning and providing nursing care for individuals, families, and group community. A, assessment, B, nursing process, D, diagnosis, or D, implementation. I'm not even going to take a moment and give you guys a chance. You all should know this answer by now. And the correct answer is the nursing process, which includes your assessment, your diagnosis, your planning, your intervention, and your evaluation, your ADPI. All right, next question. Exchange of gases takes place in which of the following organ? A, kidney, B, lungs, C, liver, or D, hard. And you guys should learn this in A and P, so I know you're all going to get this correct, correctly. And the correct answer is the lungs. That's where oxygen um, exchange takes place, specifically where in the lungs, in the alveoli, right? We, we want oxygen to go in, and it goes to the blood, and we want what to come out? Carbon dioxide. Let's talk about our wrong choices. Kidneys. What do the kidneys do? They filter toxins from the blood, and all those toxins come into the form of what? Urine, and you excrete it out of the body. Choice C, liver. What does the liver do? Liver does lots of things, but specifically the liver metabolizes, right? So it breaks down those drugs in the body for you to get rid of it through your system, right? And what else is the liver important for? Our clotting factors. That's why patients who are alcoholics, we don't do surgery on them unless we have to because they might bleed out on the table, all right? And then... D, your heart, you guys know what the heart does. It pumps all of the oxygen-rich um, 
uh, blood to all of your vital organs for survival. Next question. A muscular enlarged pouch or sack that lies slightly to the left, which is used for temporary storage of food. A, gallbladder, B, urinary bladder, C, stomach, or D, lungs. This is another one I'm not going to give you a little pause either. Why? Because they gave us a hint. They said temporary storage of food. You know that's the stomach. You know digestion does not happen in the stomach. That food is stored in the stomach. Hydrochloric acid starts to break it down. But where does the digestion begin? In the small intestine. So the correct answer is the stomach. Now let's talk about our wrong answer choices. You have A, the gallbladder. That's located in the right upper um, um, quadrant of the abdomen. And what's the gallbladder responsible for? Well, the gallbladder is responsible for releasing those enzymes that break down what? Fatty foods. Gallbladder is very important. Um, what's our next choice? Okay, the urinary bladder. You guys know what, uh, what that is. That's the bladder that's located on the lower part of the abdomen, and it holds all the urine. Um, choice where was I? Okay, choice D, the lungs. We just talked about that. The lungs are responsible for oxygen, carbon dioxide exchange. Um, and the lungs are located on both sides of the, um, the chest cavity of the chest wall, left and right side. All right, next question. Hormones secreted by islets of Langerhans. A, progesterone. B, testosterone. C, insulin or D, hemoglobin, and I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. All right, guys, the correct answer is insulin. And by the way, guys, um, the islets of Langerhans, it's located where? In the pancreas. And that's why when people have pancreatic issues, you tend to see they have diabetic issues because remember, those beta cells in the islets of Langerhans, which is located in the pancreas, is responsible for insulin. Very, very important. Now let's talk about our wrong answer choices. A, progesterone. This hormone is mainly secreted by the ovaries. B, testosterone, mainly secreted by the testes. So progesterone for women, um, testosterone for men. And choice D, hemoglobin. Guys, hemoglobin is carried in the red blood cells, and that's what holds on to the oxygen. So that's why getting hemoglobin levels are so important, because if the patient's hemoglobin level is low, that means their oxygen-carrying capacity is low. All right? I wonder if that was my last question. No. We've got a couple more to go. Which of the following cluster of data belongs to Maslow's hierarchy of needs? And you all, if you've been following my videos for any amount of time, you all should get this right because I've been shoving Maslow's hierarchy of needs down your throat. You should have it down packed by now. All right. So let's talk about it. A, love and belonging. B, physiologic needs. C, self-actualization. Or D, all of the above. All of the above. All of the above, all of um, these choices are part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, let me ask you a bonus question. Which one is a priority out of these? Which one is the most important out of these? Which one are you going to be running to the patient if one of them are in danger? Physiological needs, blood pressure, fluid and electrolyte, nutrition, um, hemodynamic status, right? Uh, um, airway, breathing, circulation, anything that physically keeps that patient alive, that's going to be our priority. We don't care about anything else if our patient's dead, do we? All right. Next question. This is characterized by severe symptoms relatively sh of short duration. A, chronic illness, B, acute illness, C, pain, or D, syndrome. And the correct answer is acute illness. So acute illness is something that comes on acutely, comes on quickly, and the duration is short, where chronic is something a long term. All right, what are the choices? Pain, you guys know what pain is. That's extreme hurt or discomfort. And syndrome. Syndrome is a cluster of signs or, and symptoms that belong to a disorder or disease process. So when you see that word syndrome, all it means is a, is a cluster of signs and symptoms that belong to a certain disease process or disorder. 
All right, guys, we are down to our last question. Five teaspoons equivalent to how many mLs? And this is easy, guys. You guys learned this in Foundations of Nursing, Nursing, um, nursing Math 101. And the correct answer is 25 mLs. You guys know one teaspoon is five mLs. So if we have five mLs, five times five is 25. So that's going to give us, if, if we have five teaspoons, five times five is 25. That's going to give us 25 mLs. Guys, I know this video was short. I usually go 30 minutes. I did about half the time, but I hope it was helpful. And I promise I'm going to try my best just to schedule better because on the days that I see um, patients for the amount of time that I saw patients today, I just don't do well on these videos because I'm exhausted and I have to fake the excitement that you're seeing on this camera. I'm faking it. All right, guys. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Guys, please. So let me tell you what I want to do. This is my heart's desire. I want to be doing this for you full time. I want all day, every day, just to be uh, providing content for you so that instead of twice a week, you guys will be getting two videos a day. That's what I want, but I have to get there. So I'm asking you, please support my channel by sharing. Please share my content on all your social uh, media sites. Any friends that are in nursing school or studying or even thinking about the nursing program, share it so they can start watching and learning, okay? Please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Please leave me a comment on any videos you'd like to see in the future or what you thought about. Well, maybe not specifically what you thought about this video because I wasn't at my best, but go ahead, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video and I promise I'll deliver better stuff for you next time. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I'll see you on my next video.